We certainly have enjoyed sharing these special presentations, The One and Only Nation Written in the Stars. Tonight we have part five, the coded message for mankind revealed. A few thoughts. If we are familiar with the book of Genesis, we might remember the story of Joseph and his dream. It's recorded in Genesis chapter 37, and it reveals that Jacob and his 12 sons knew that they were pictured in the stars because Joseph spoke to them and told them about a dream that he had in which Jacob and Joseph's mother and the 12 sons were represented as heavenly bodies, the sun, moon, and stars. And Joseph didn't have to explain to them the connection. And they saw it right away, and Jacob saw it right away. And Jacob said, will I and your mother and your brothers indeed come to bow ourselves down to you? He had seen all of this in the heavenly vision, including the 11 stars bowing down to him. And of course, this was prophetic of what would happen when Joseph went into Egypt, and indeed this did literally happen, that his family ended up bowing down to him. But the point here is that they knew that this connection existed between the heavenly bodies and their family. This is kind of important for us when we look into the Psalms. In Psalm 19, David wrote about how Elohim's glory is revealed in the Maseroth. I went through these verses and looked up the original Hebrew words that they're based upon, and I put this literal interpretation in the text. And you see the numbers, the Strong's numbers. You can check these out for yourself. We have a list after this that will be up on the screen momentarily in case you'd like to stop this when it's a recording and be able to look up these. In Psalm 19.1, David wrote, The heavens record the glory of Elohim, and their firmament manifests the work of his open hand. Now, I found this very, very interesting because, of course, when David wrote, there was no such thing as anything like a tape recorder or any kind of a recording device. And yet... What he's suggesting is that the heavens record something that had happened earlier. And in a sense, they play it back for us to be able to see that. And I find that an amazing concept for the time that David wrote this. And indeed, isn't that what the Maseroth does? Because when we look at it, we look at something that Yahweh created before he even created man that tells us about his glory. And it says here, the firmament manifests the work of his open hand. It's very interesting that there's a Hebrew word for an open hand and there's a Hebrew word for a closed hand. The fact that it's talking about his open hand means that it's talking about Elohim's generosity and his sharing nature. And this is what David was seeing in what was recorded in the heavens. This, to me, indicates that he understood that the Maseroth was indeed talking about the nation of Israel. It goes on and says this. 
Day by day gushes forth answers, and night by night reveals intimate knowledge of him. Nothing is spoken, no spoken words. They make no sound to be heard. And this is kind of an amazing verse to me when we apply it to the Maseroth. The Maseroth is full of answers. As we've looked into the Maseroth in these videos, the Maseroth has not spoken to us. We didn't go outside and hear a voice from heaven telling us what all these things mean. And yet, has it not gushed forth answers to us? And has it not revealed an intimate knowledge of him? Speaking there about relationship, has it not revealed a divine relationship between Yahweh and his nation? And done all of this without words. Next it says, their circumference appears to all the earth and their continuation of segments to the extremity of the world. I found this so interesting when I looked up these Hebrew words. It's actually talking about the Maseroth. The Maseroth is organized in this way. It's a circumference, it's a circle, but it's composed of segments, isn't it? And it appears around the whole earth. Clearly, David is talking about the Maseroth in this verse. Goes on to say, in them, that is within these segments in this circumference, he, that is the creator, has set a tabernacle for the son, who is like a son-in-law coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a champion to run his course. His departure is from the end of the heavens and his revolution to the termination point, and nothing is hidden from his heat. A tabernacle is a dwelling place. What it's saying is that he has set a dwelling place for the sun within the Maseroth with which it travels. And he's like a son-in-law coming out of his chamber. I think that's just kind of an interesting thing. It's likening the son as if the son is the son-in-law of the Father in heaven. And he comes out of his chamber. In other words, the segments of the Maseroth are divided into chambers. And the sun actually transverses through all of them in its circuit, in its revolution around the Maseroth. And it says he comes out rejoicing as a champion to run his course. And I think that is so cool because if you've ever seen a champion athlete run a race around a course, he does not tire out. He's able to run with vigor, with strength, through the whole of the circuit. And that's how the sun is being explained here in its relationship to the Maseroth. It says, his departure is from the end of the heavens and his revolution to the termination point. Again, talking about moving in this great circle and nothing is hidden from his heat. In other words, everywhere in the earth, we feel the sun in its circuit. All of this glorifying our grand creator and showing how he has focused this creation on the earth to bless us. And no doubt realizing that Israel is pictured in the Maseroth, this has all the more meaning for David and for us. The Treasury of David, which is a reference book that speaks about Psalm 19, references these verses 
particularly where it says his going forth is from the end of the heaven and his circuit unto the ends of it. It says he bears his light to the boundaries of the solar heavens, traversing the zodiac with steady motion, denying his light to none who dwell within his range. So the scholars that wrote this particular book also realized that this is about the Maseroth, today called the Zodiac, and that this glorifies God. And we have learned through these videos a very specific way in which it glorifies God, revealing that special relationship between the Creator and the one and only nation written in the stars. Quite amazing. This is the page that has the resources that I used in putting together these verses. And if you're seeing this as a video rather than live right now, just pause it if you want to look these things up. We have recorded a series of interviews for you tonight that are going to be included now in this presentation. And I think you're going to enjoy these. So I'm going to go to those videos now. One thing in this uh, first video that we tried to deal with, because we are talking about signs in the heavens, in the sun, moon, and stars, uh, that immediately, a lot of times, when you talk about such subjects, people say, oh, well, you shouldn't talk about that because that's astrology, and they link that to the occult. Did this presentation make you feel like you were doing something wrong, like this is about astrology? No, it doesn't. I think um, our view of the signs in the sky has really been um, pretty damaged through time because of astrology. Because of astrology, um, we kind of tend to think of the signs in the sky as um, not really meaning much, mm -hmm. or we think of it as if you do place meaning you're making something out of nothing. Right. And it's just like some kind of a superstition thing. Uh, so I feel like we've really like lost the original purpose and meaning of what Yahweh intended, and we have put this perversion mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of what Yahweh intended over it. Right. Yeah, that's what we're really trying to get to in this video, is to get back to what Yahweh really intended and not how this has been misused. So uh, I, your, your thoughts, I think, are um, could be very helpful to people. So, you know, on this thing about astrology, uh, it's the same stars in the sky, whether we're talking about astrology or whether we're talking about God's purpose. And in the Bible, it talks about the Maseroth. And the Maseroth was originally God's great clock that he created in the sky, we go into detail in this video about that, but it involves signs in the sky around the earth. What do you think about that? Well, I really like your point about how um, he calls them all by their names and that uh, I think it's really important throughout this um, series to um, remember that the names and the associations that we have in our culture and that we're familiar with may not be the original names that Yahweh created them and designated them as being. I think people that have connected these signs to astrology, they look to these charts and stuff for horoscopes, but nobody stops to think about the design of all of this, that it's not really designed to give people a personal uh forecast of their life it's actually a clock right it's pretty it's a pretty amazing clock right that yahweh made it works like a clock what do you think of that 
I think the way that God has this all laid out so organized so that the um, sun moves around the Maseroth, highlighting each constellation throughout the year and just like so precisely mm. moving together with the Maseroth um, certainly points to there being some kind of significance in these 12 divisions and um, makes you think that there has to be a message in it that Yahweh intended that isn't the same as this astrology for your personal life or some kind of a personality test in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. It's, uh, it really is pretty amazing. And I think as this whole uh, series has unfolded, we get to see that more and more, how purposeful all of this is and that it really does reveal him, reveal him as our creator and that he is trying to show us something. Yeah, I have to agree with that. And it's also interesting how much of the timekeeping aspect of this great clock um, that we've been removed from. Mm -hmm. Because um, nowadays, whereas before you used to look up into the sky to tell the date or the time, mm -hmm. now you just look at the wall mm -hmm. and the calendar or your computer screen. Yes. We're so disconnected from um, this clock and um, all that Yahweh made it to be yes. that um, we really don't see as much of the message as we would and we're much more disconnected from the significance of who Yahweh is. We're not reminded as much right. of God and His creation and His love for us and all the things that it would be telling mm. us to look up in the sky and see the times. And I think that um, makes it harder for us and more likely for us and easier for us to forget the times yeah. and to be more lackadaisical mm -hmm. about um, our spiritual lives and where we're at in God's timeline and his plan. Wow. I think that's really something to think about, especially for modern people. Yeah. You know, because we are so used to looking at the calendar on the wall, I think it's very easy for us to forget the calendar in the wall is based on the calendar in the sky. Yeah, it's really quite amazing to see how precise this clock is and um, how precise it is even after the thousands of years since the fall mm -hmm. that there's only a five-day difference in the year. I, I think um, humanity would be hard-pressed to create a mechanism that precise, you know, um, if you compare the ratio of minutes to hours on a slow moving clock, yes, uh, it's really much worse and a greater rate of decline, yes, than what we've experienced, right, with just five days in a year, um, throughout the thousands of years since the fall of man. So true, and the evidence really is from the Bible, from other sources, that originally. The year was exactly 360 days. Everything matched up perfectly. Uh, and the cycles of the moon matched up perfectly with that. And uh, it was just really a perfect clock. And then after the fall, eventually, we had the condition, like you say. But even so, that is amazing that it's still so close. I really have appreciated these thoughts you have. Any uh, final thoughts on this particular? Uh, part one. It's really just encouraging as we come to the end um, to see uh, how we do have this new heaven and earth to look forward to that will be restored to the perfect version that it originally was. And um, the solution to this problem of sin corrupting everything. Yes. And um, that there is a nation that's part of that plan. And it really makes you want to be a part of it and um, it makes me want to learn more about it and to see um, more and more what my part is mm. in that nation and God's plan. That's awesome, Abigail. We really appreciate your thoughts about this today. Dawn, I know you're proud of your daughter and uh, the wonderful thoughts she had. Absolutely. <laughs> I know you had some observations too about this first video, this brought some things to people's mind, I think, that were some 
kind of new ideas. And um, for many people, um, what were some of the things you wanted to share? One of the things that struck me like right up front, right away, is how much with this encouragement that you had for people, um, you know, just really to say, hey, this terrible thing has happened, you know, with the election, a lot of people are feeling depressed, discouraged, not sure what that's going to mean, that there's a bigger picture here and that we can look to that bigger picture in the heavens that our father put there, that he's authored. And we can use that as our personal encouragement. Well, um, rather that was a new message to them, because that's the first time that they've ever discovered you, because the signs in the sky type of messages tend to bring new people along. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, So those people that did come along, they were reaching out to me on on the help desk to say, hey, well, where do I find this resource that he talked about? Or where do I find that one? Mm -hmm. But of course, for me personally, what I was just watching the video content and and just um, hearing the presentation was, wow, this is like a follow-up that's just so perfect for all of us that have been with you all along. Mm -hmm. Um, Pointing out like how the agenda, the UN agenda has come forward, um, the the seminar that you did about the 12 tribes, Mm -hmm. like immediately you're thinking of this, even here in this part one, before you get into it, you just know it's coming and you're like, oh, what's he gonna (laughs) update us with? And it's really exciting. And even the on the road design programs, because for example, you were saying, um, the definition of a nation, like most people don't mm-hmm. even know that in the biblical sense, the, the definition of a nation is physical descendants of the patriarch. Right. And in the case of Israel, it's the physical descendants of the patriarch Jacob Israel and or the people who are grafted in to his tribal. Right. Um, and so when you bring that teaching from the past forward into this presentation, it's a much richer experience. It's still there because it's recorded that people can go back and kind of dig deeper into these things. You know, uh, I think one thing people might not know when they listen to these videos is that a lot of these things that I'm teaching are a result in my life of my own personal journey with Messiah. In other words, like when I'm talking about the failings of the country. When I'm talking about the fact that the world is headed towards this one world government in which literally every nation on the earth is going to come under the control of this evil, and we are seeing it well underway. Well, these are things that I have grappled with for years because I saw this coming years ago. Right. And at that time, you know, I found myself loyal to the foundations of what America is, the Republic, the idea of God-given rights, and all these things are very, very true. But Yahweh drew me towards his nation. Right. And he taught me what a nation is, that it's being a descendant of a common ancestor. And he taught me that what that means is that you have a duty to your nation because your life actually comes from your nation, not your country. Right. Your country didn't really give birth to you. Your nation gave birth to you. So you actually owe more to your nation than you do to your country. Well, no, most people don't even know there's a difference between a nation and a country, but there is. One of the things, too, that I just really felt that you brought forward here with this is the idea you taught us in 2008 that we don't have any more rights. You said the rights are done away with. And people were like, oh, my goodness. And it was exactly because you were seeing this um, coming along, exactly right. where we are now in the time stream back then. Yes. And so you helped those of us that were with you prepare. And those recordings are still there to help other people prepare if that's just really got them kind of stressed out. Yes, absolutely right. And it is true. I mean, COVID-19 should teach us all that we don't really have any rights, that that's all really a myth. And actually, see, our hope has been the wrong thing. Thinking that we have rights, thinking that the country is our hope. And actually, Yahweh has a nation that he has written in the stars. And that's what this whole series is about. And that's where our hope is. When everything else fails, that's where the light is. And I've gone through this personal journey. I know you have, all of us have here, where that's who we are. Our identity is with our nation. And we're trying to mark out the road for others to be able to make that transition. Yes. Yes. 
Yes, because to not do that means that you are trapped. Mm -hmm. You're trapped in a failing world and it's going to cave in on you before you're ready. You won't know what to do. Whereas if you understand what this is about, about his nation, it marks out a way for you to escape that before the whole walls fall down. And that's really the whole point of why we're doing this. Right. The remnant exodus. We want to be a part of it, not left out. Exactly. What other points did you want to go into? One of the things that I thought was just really a great object lesson that you can run away with in your mind or, you know, you can even hang on to it is uh, really illustrated in a regular clock. So, um, you know, for those that don't know, we had a fire, it burned everything up. And so eventually we had to buy a new clock for, for the room. <laughs> and I have a nice round clock, like a lot of people might have on their wall, and it takes one battery. And I get that battery and I put it in there and it'll run for an entire year. And every year, right at the end of the Hebrew year, it fails. <laughs> It starts to, is yeah. the, the second hand won't go around. And I always forget that, oh yeah, it's time to change that battery. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, if you've had that experience, you can really translate it to what you were saying about the perfection of his creation, that it was 360 days, that it was 12 segments that it was broken down into, and that uh, it was exactly a 30-day month. Well, now mm -hmm, it's a little mm -hmm. bit off, but it's pretty close to that, mm -hmm, but it's a little mm -hmm. off. And now it's 365 days, not 360 mm -hmm. days. Well, I'm getting a little older. I'm not yes. as young as I used to be. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel sometimes like my battery's winding down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I know it's going to get worse. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's, it, when you can connect with it on that level, you understand what you're seeing. Yes. And I have seen people come to faith and actually stumble over this very issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was very pleased to be able to share this presentation with them yes. that this is exactly why the clock is a little off. And then you have all this cultural documentation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's extra biblical, but really does show that these people understood this that, you know, while they did get off and mm -hmm, they did mm -hmm. go into the astrology and some of the pagan practices that are wrong in our yes. sin, um, they did understand that the clock was 360 days. They yes. have all kinds of records of that. So it verifies the scripture. Right, right. And that's just phenomenal. I mean, mm -hmm. that historical fact alone could bring someone to faith if they really understood yes. these and, and meditated on it. Wow. Yeah, that's really so true. All his work is perfect, and it's man that has damaged his creation. I think this is what we don't realize, that he made this perfect universe, and then we came in and kicked it over. Right. And we were very rude. Right. He made all of this for us. He made this beautiful universe for us, beautiful home for us. He made us perfect. And then we decided to come in and kick it over and ruin it. And how would any of us feel about that? Not good. And, and the other thing that really just strikes me about that is to walk away from close fellowship with him. Yes. And really to get back to these things is to walk back into close fellowship with him. And that's really what's being offered. We don't have to stay on the outside. <laughs> exactly. Judah does a lot of this editing, and Judah's kind of a nerd. It's true. <laughs> Welcome, Judah. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Um, where would you like to start? I guess where I wanted to start was these signs that are in the sky. Yes. And um, in that video, you talked about the zodiac mm -hmm. and how it's actually a feature of astronomy. Right. Um, there's a separation between people using it for a reference point in the heavens and uh, people who use it for divination and you right. know telling their future. Um, there's a great dividing line between the two of them, and a lot of the original signs are preserved in the zodiac. That's right. We learned about that and how how we can find out some of these Maseroth signs uh, and what they were 
just by looking at the Zodiac. Um, That's right. Well, you know, here's something that I thought was interesting. Um, looking at the idea of is there any connection between the Zodiac and the Israel of the Bible? Yes. Um, is there any? Uh, as it turns out, yes. <laughs> A perfect match. Yeah. And that was what was so amazing working on it with you is going through each one, you know, putting it all in there, all the slides and stuff. Uh, but going through each one and seeing how well it really did match. Yeah. You know. <laughs> it must have been kind of fun when I would give you uh, my graphics and stuff like that and you'd see it for the first time. Yes, yes. And uh, so you were kind of learning it before everybody else. It's true. It's very true. Well, let's look at some of those that we learned about. Just like in the scriptures, starting in the army order of Israel, we start with Judah, you know? Right. And just like a clock, we start there and we go around, you know? Right. And um, it's amazing, too, how they had that connection with the heavenly beings. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, Judah having that connection in heaven with Michael. Yes. The angel. Also um, represented by a lion, right? That's right. Yeah. Also represented by a lion. So it really just, it syncs up so well and it ties together. And it really helps you to start to see this thing in the heavens that is the Maseroth. Yes. And that was just amazing to see that for the first time. I haven't been as familiar with the Maseroth. We have talked about it in earlier teachings but to get more, um, to associate it more with Yahweh and what he's doing is just, it opens your eyes, you know? Yeah, it's big. It's big. It's big. Yeah. And it's amazing how well you can really see these some of these pictures, like the lion or the bow of, of that ship, and how it communicates these different characteristics yes. of these different tribes of Israel. Right. Uh, I just, I love that. It ties right in to both the prophecies of Jacob and Moses regarding each of the tribes. When looking at these Masroth signs, they were almost prophetic of these brothers of um, that became Israel, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And the characteristics that these people had match the Masroth signs so well. Right. Here we see... You know, you have these two brothers, and we found out the history behind that, how that's actually how it was. You had, you know, you had Zebulun coming in in the sea to bring the goods, and then you would have Issachar, like it says here, is a strong donkey, you uh -huh. know, carrying the goods throughout the land. Yes. And the teamwork there right. that was prophesied just through the star alone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you're right. It's, pro it's really a prophecy written in the stars. You seem to show some special interest in Benjamin. Yes. I remember when we were working on the Breastplate series. Yes. Actually, and we talked about the possible discovery of the actual gem there. Yes. For Benjamin. And that was incredible. And um, it was a little bit different with Benjamin than the others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just because of the history behind it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there had been quite a few changes with Benjamin, different really, really different interpretations through the years. Yes, um, and I just thought it was amazing how how that change had continued to happen. You know, um, where it went from being the wolf, we found out that a lot of the ancient tribes saw it as a wolf. Right. You know, it went from the wolf to here the hired man, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, it was interpreted as a sheep, a goat. Y yes, uh, actually a ram. A yeah, ram. Aries, 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 the ram. Yes. Yeah. So I just thought it was amazing how um, some people still pre had preserved the original. Yes. You know, this wolf right. of Benjamin. And even some of the stuff we had learned from the uh, breastplate video right. about that gemstone. Right. It was really quite resonating with me just learning all that and how it came together. It was interesting, I think, about the Maseroth that uh, some of the signs of the Maseroth 
as how they're perceived today, have been affected by the mythology of the pagan peoples. Yes. But it's still possible for us to trace it back to what it was originally because there are other peoples that preserve the original meaning, and I believe that's what's true here with Benjamin. With Benjamin, yes. Manasseh kind of reminds me of our current state of our nation, Israel. It's kind of like that. It's sort of split. Mm-hmm. Um, it's amazing as well how this story that we ran into in the Torah mm-hmm. about um, you know, the crossing over of the two sons right, and how it was switched. Yes. But it was correct. Yes. It was switched to be correct. Right. You know, and um, once again, these this picture of these fish. Yes. And how we are at the end, really, you know, we're at this end time in a place where that has been fulfilled, where the, the seed of... Um, Israel has been spread throughout the whole world. Yes. And we're all connected to Israel in some way. Right. We're all descended from Israel in some way. Right, right. And just like fish going out into the water. Yeah, exactly. And we just need to tie back to our real identity. You know, right. go back to our father. Right. And right. Uh, that was one of the biggest things, I think, about going to the Maseroth is... Um, putting your identity in Israel, yes. you know, because that's our nation, yeah. you know, that's who we really belong to. Right. And that really helped me to see that more, mm-hmm. to, ha- get, to get a strong connection yes. with my forefathers. Exactly. And with my brothers. Yes. In this nation. Yes. Did you have any last thoughts about this video you wanted to share, or did you cover everything? Well, I guess the most important thing I would just say is that Israel is the main thing here when we look at the star signs, and Yahweh clearly has a plan for his people. Yes. And it is so, so amazing that he put these up there, and it really shows how much he cares about his people. It really does. You know, it reminds me of somebody that puts portraits of their family up in their wall. Yes, exactly. Okay, Solomon, it's uh, time for your interview. And uh, what would you like to talk about? Well, you know, when I first watched the second presentation, mm-hmm. uh, Zebulun really stood out to me because I think it was really so profound and amazing mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that that Zebulun is this constellation and that Yahweh set it up so that these stars are the main wayfaring stars for, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. ships and um, sailors. So it's just really awesome to see how he set that up. And th- there's just something really cool about that to me that I think is really? really awesome. Even today in the Maseroth, it's pictured by a crab mm-hmm. on the shore of the ocean, right? And uh, as you look at those stars, they look like the front of the ship. The prophecies in Scripture connect Zebulun up with the ocean and in the sea. So, yeah, yeah, that's really pretty cool. Uh, You know, another one that you were mentioning that really got your attention was Taurus the bull. Um, Yeah, well, I just think it's really interesting because Joseph was really kind of like a bull charging the front and you know he really set up um a lot of things in egypt and onward that Mm -hmm, would really mm -hmm. uh shape the nation of israel yes so you know he really was charging like a bull Mm -hmm. uh pushing forward Mm -hmm. the goals of uh israel right right that's very true pretty amazing you know we're only four uh, constellations in and it's already so beautiful to see that Yahweh created these stars and these constellations and he put them up as a testimony to the covenant mm-hmm. with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob exactly. you know before we were even created right and that is really just such a beautiful 
thing that he did to immortalize the covenant before we even existed. Yes. You know, it's just so amazing. Really, really. Well, you know, and this is our theme, right, is uh, the one and only nation written in the stars. That has to be of incredible significance. And it's exactly what you're talking about. It's about the covenant. I think another picture that the Maseroth portrays is when you look up at these constellations that are the different tribes of Israel, it, it kind of shows the story of how we're out there amongst the stars. Mm. All of Israel, we're, we're amongst, you know, the world and all the stars, but we're out there and we need to come together to form his one nation. Yes. And, you know, I think the Maseroth is really there to be a picture of what we should be mm. and, you know, what we should uh, look to. Yes. I, I like that a lot. I think there's, uh, in, in this second video, it's starting to form up that just like the Maseroth itself was created to be this giant clock in the sky, it fits together a certain way. There's an order to it, mm -hmm. that it all works together. And then as we look at these signs of the tribes, we're starting to see that there's an order to these tribes too. Mm -hmm. And that they're all meant to fit together a certain way and to operate a certain way. Yet, we don't see the full picture yet at this point, but it's drawing us towards something. It's drawing us towards a certain order that we see in the Maseroth. And I think that's cool that you picked up on that. Sherry, tell us some of the things about this particular video that uh, got your attention. Well, this is the third part of the series. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been uh, really neat to look at um, the tribes, not just from the stones, now that it has the Maseroth with these signs with the stars, and mm -hmm. they're matching up. And I think that's pretty neat, because I've never known that they were going to match up <laughs> and have a story. Yeah, and it is kind of an interesting story. And in this particular video, we're doing the second six out of the 12 signs of the Maseroth. Yes. And we've already completed the first half. Anything special you'd like to say about any of these other signs that we talk about in this particular video? Well, I have enjoyed looking at um, the last, let's say, the fourth row. Uh, it had more Libra. I like that pouring out of the oil. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the whole story with um, Levi and Dan, because a long time ago I had my study on my own with Dan, mm -hmm. and I knew that he was going to be, you know, not anymore a tribe, and you just never knew why. Yes. And so then I was like meditating on that and praying on that. Um, so I thought that's like back in the land, you know, that, well, if they take that rebuke from you and they turned around, I can see that we're... Mm -hmm. They would take that place. So I thought that was really interesting um, with uh, Levi. It is kind of amazing to have that whole story written in the stars, isn't it? Yes. With all the various signs. There's a lot there, too. I mean, it's amazing we get to have this. Yes. That Yahweh lets this be revealed, because I know as a young one, I used to like going to the planetarium and looking at the stars. Right. And you knew in your scriptures, he made them mm -hmm. by name, mm -hmm. called them by name. And that they actually um, represented, I, I used to like Orion, the, the belt, which that's not in the series here, but yes. just saying that, you know, you just never knew enough. Right. So now as a, a remnant, I mm -hmm. find this fascinating with Yah um, Yahweh showing that this has a real divine, um, like, it, like you said, it's a timekeeping device. Yes. The Maseroth. So... Um, Back with Libra and um, Virgo. 
Yes. I love that. I bring the good news and uh, what that represents. With Israel. So I, I just, I love the whole thing. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, did you have any uh, final thoughts? I noticed you have a lot of notes. Was there anything on you you wanted to bring in? It was just so much. I guess it's just personally for me um, to share with everybody. I, all I can say is it, it's, it's something that you have to sit with Yahweh mm-hmm. and let him work with your heart and mind. Yes. So, you know, um, I would just suggest to people to really Ask where you are in this whole prophetic mm-hmm. ending. Mm-hmm. And this is, uh, with all the darkness on there, we carry the light of Messiah. So this is a great yes. thing. Yes. So um, it's so mm. encouraging. So um, that's all I'm going to leave, leave it right now. Okay. That's excellent. And I think that's such good advice. It is at the time, obviously, yes. that this is being brought to our attention. And we need to pray about it and think about it. So thank you very much, Sherry. I really appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Well, Sheila, we had a lot in this particular video that I think was interesting to talk about. What would you like to share about? You know, for many, many years, I have heard about Dan. Mm -hmm. And I knew that Dan was originally one of the tribes Mm -hmm. when they left the land or when they went into Egypt. Yes. And so at the end, in Revelation, he's not mentioned. Right. As, you know, we've talked about here. And I always wondered what happened. Yes. And I knew something happened. But this is the first time anyone's ever told us what happened. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And strangely enough, most recently I was reading about the time period when the tribes were getting settled Mm -hmm. in their places in the land. One of the other things that was happening is that some of the tribes were not exactly happy with their allotment of of property. And Dan was one of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, so during this time, I know that his allotment was down close to to Judah's, Mm -hmm. which was almost in the southern part. Mm -hmm. He went all the way up to the in the Naphtali area and close to Manasseh's area and uh, took a town called Laish. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's called Dan. Yes. <laughs> or it was, you know, when Jeroboam took over the 10 tribes in the north and set up the golden calves mm-hmm. that they were to worship up there and not come back down to Jerusalem. One of those was put in Dan. Yes. And most likely it was put up there in mm-hmm. La- in Laish, in the very, very northern part. Right. Uh-huh. So that they wouldn't have to travel so far right. to come to Samaria. Mm-hmm. So it, to me, that was just a perfect example of Dan. Yes. The snake. Right. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And so his particular documentary on this war that was going on. Yes was just fascinating to me. And then, of course, the fact that this has Yeshua pictured as stamping on the uh, scorpions and the Mm -hmm, snake. mm -hmm. And then, of course, the eagle coming in. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that Dan did, of course, was he set up his own people as priest. Yes, he did. And so the Levites left town. Mm -hmm. They all moved to the south to join Judah. Right. And, of course, this was a really dramatic thing that happened because he was traveling on Yahweh's turf. Exactly. You know, nowadays, uh, I think people don't fully understand the seriousness of Yahweh's order and particularly covenants that he makes. Exactly. And he made a covenant with Levi. Exactly. That Levi would not only be the priests, but they would be scattered throughout the various territories, be teachers of the Torah, and so on. And Dan, with impunity, simply replaced Levi with priests who had no covenant. That's right. Yeah. It it reminds me that this sort of thing happens today. Yes, it does. People take on uh, positions as teachers as pastors who have no anointing to be that, who have not been called to be that, and displace people who have been. Right. 
So this is still an issue. It and is. I believe this is an important story because it tells us there are dire consequences for doing that. That's right. Because Dan is no more at the end of the age. That's right. Yeah, that's and, true. And uh, so that's really serious. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very serious. Yes, yeah. it is. And, and it's uh, so interesting, I think, with this. It's, it's such a detailed story that's written in the stars with this particular constellation. Right. Yeah. It's just fascinating to me, the whole picture of all of this being in the stars from the very beginning of time. Mm, yes. It's when we were created, before we were created, before the world was created, and everything else. And, and he wrote all this. And, you know, he doesn't change. Right. He did change this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Dan did it. Right. Because it was part of his Torah that says, you know, if you displace somebody or if you do something with someone, then they're going to displace you. Exactly. And that's what happened. That is what happened. And he keeps his word. That's true. And I think <laughs> we find these things in this story. It's not that he made them happen. No, he didn't. But he foresees what is going to happen. Yeah, right. And it reminds us that our choices have consequences. Exactly. And even if you're one of the sons of Israel, one of the sons of Jacob, if you make bad decisions, you're going to end up having bad consequences. Right. And the fact that this very concept is written into the stars, I think. <laughs> That's pretty significant. Uh, yes. It reminds us, I think here in these last days, if we want to be part of his remnant that returns home in the second exodus, we have to make the right choices right. for that to happen. That's right. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to share? Oh, well, just that it's so wonderful to see this because our father, it doesn't change. He, he, he remains the same. Um, it shows us, you know, why Israel is important to him mm -hmm. from the very beginning before Israel ever became. Yes. Because... That's right. Uh, he knew that the 70 nations were going to reject him. Mm -hmm. And he knew that he would choose uh, the people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to because they he already knew that they were going to be faithful to him. Yes. Israel hasn't always been faithful. In fact, it moves back and forth so fast it can make your head spin. Yes, indeed. But uh, it's, it is still his nation. Right. And so... He's always got a faithful remnant. Yes. And uh, we just pray that that remnant is going to show up really soon. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and we know they are out there, don't That's we? That's right. We know they're there. Yes. We just know that they need to find us. Right. You know, Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 11 that Yahweh always keeps a remnant of Israel right. for himself. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sheila. That was really excellent thoughts. Oh, thank you. Um, Richard, uh, do you have some points that you'd especially like to bring out about this video? First of all, I just wanted to say that uh, the title of this series is Riveting. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope people find uh, that true and that draws them to the exceptionalness uh, of this video and this series. Thank uh, you, Richard. The first uh, statement from the content I have there that uh, really, really was beautiful, was uh, proof of Israel's everlasting importance. And, um, you know, the Maseroth was created long before the birth of Jacob, mm -hmm, slash Israel, mm -hmm. and his 12 sons, uh, which are the nation of mm -hmm, Elohim, mm -hmm. his people. And yet, they display their characteristics, their characters, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and destiny yes. of them. The sky now is proclaiming before they're even born, mm -hmm. and now, you know, they're sleeping, mm -hmm. <laughs> and now the heavens are declaring yes. the very plan and destiny yes. of Elohim through this one nation that's revealed through the stars. So very, very important and 
this video, I, I know some truth from it and understanding, but it broadened every one of these categories that I'm mm -hmm, talking about mm -hmm, there, or mm -hmm. gave me absolutely new truth revealed yes. that was hidden to me, even though mm -hmm. I don't think anything should be hidden there the number of times that uh, many believers have gone from Genesis mm -hmm, to Revelation. Mm -hmm. you know. The next thing that uh, was really, really uh, beautiful in this, and it's a lot of new stuff, was uh, when it came down to the Star of David and mm -hmm. the, uh, um, the story of it, and uh, Yeshua's uh, brother, uh, James the Just, and the way that it was explained about Star, uh, David's Hebrew name mm -hmm. with the two dollars in it mm -hmm. there, the three mm -hmm. three pictograph letters are like uh, triangles, but like D's. Yes. And when you intercross them, mm -hmm. you come out with a star. Yes. That star, uh, when it comes to David, uh, means a lot. Yes. We found out it was not just a star, but it becomes authority because it's a seal. Yes. And uh, Yahweh gave David a covenant. Yes. A covenant for his house and a covenant of the ruling and reigning mm -hmm. forever on earth. Yes. In Elohim's kingdom on earth. That was amazing stuff to hear that. And of course, you understand a lot of this because you're of the lineage of mm -hmm. the K King David. Here's another thing about that you might find interesting. I didn't mention this in that video. Besides being called the Star of David, it's also called the Shield of David. And if you look at it, it's got six points going off in different directions, like around the center. Mm. And this actually pictures the protection of Yahweh, of David, due to the covenant that David had this special protection. His house has this special protection so as to last forever. And I think that's another interesting symbol of the Star of David. But what was just as exciting was when you elaborated on Zion Logal. Mm -hmm. And that's where James the Just comes in that I was mentioning there. And I never seen it so clear, even though I've been mm -hmm. looking at this thing for a long time. <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't yeah. catch, you know, the the covenant looking to Yahweh there. Oh, the, the menorah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. attached to it there. Uh, um, talking about obviously what um, before the new renewed covenant was inst mm -hmm, instituted, mm -hmm. it would picture Israel there, and then the, in the new covenant, you'd have James the Just there with um, all Israel wanting and needing still because there's tons of prophecy to be restored. Yes, the scattered remnant. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that fish is for the ingathering, yes. and not only for all of Israel, not just Judah and the Jews, but the Gentile nations being grafted in. Exactly. So uh, it that symbol, this symbol, means so, so much more mm -hmm. to me now, and uh, mm -hmm. I really cherish uh, the the understanding now of mm -hmm. this. It's It's so much richer to me than That's it awesome, ever, awesome. ever was, you know. Now we go a little farther into the meaning of uh, the 13 planetary uh, alignments yes. of the David star from 1990 to 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've never heard this taught anywhere uh -huh. as you are speaking it, you know, and as, as it's been revealed to you, it becomes such a witness Mm -hmm. in your spirit man because the spirit of God witnesses to the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, when you see these signs, no, he is not for God of Israel. He's going to regather the scattered remnant. Yes, that's right. He's going to rebuild the government and all that will come into these ones that are supposed to share this light to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. will be proclaiming this everlasting gospel, which when he came, he came to his own, it mm -hmm, said, at his birth. Mm -hmm. So now Israel is going to be able to fulfill its destiny. And these signs are telling us now it's going to happen. Yes. Now 
this is what he's doing. Yes. But everything in this series is showing us what's prophesied and what must come to pass because he says all these things will have to come to pass in this last generation right. also right. In, uh, in his gospel in Yeshua. Uh, I have just a brief testimony that I've written. For 30 years, I've been searching for this mm. truth. Wow. If, uh, if I could read that. Do. Uh, Please do. I've been deeply desiring to know something biblically sound about my part and purpose as a believer living in the last generation, which will see the return of Jesus Christ the Lord. At some times over the previous 30 years, I thought I was walking in this biblically sound doctrine and way of the disciple of Jesus. Six years ago, the scriptures were opened up to me profoundly by the inspiration of God's Spirit. I was enabled to read God's word outside of my own intellect and the intellect of my pastors and teachers online or otherwise. A gift of understanding or my eyes being opened was the only way I can explain that. Mm. Fast forward now to 2020, so that's a number of years that I've been in, in this reading the word with my eyes opened, you know. Uh, there has been a, a paradigm shift of biblical understanding and doctrine. It's just wondrous. Uh, but this was only uh, being, uh, a foundation was only being uh, laid laid down and it still had to be built on that. And this doesn't happen overnight. Right. It, it, right. We are so short-sighted. We have so much to deal with. I was denouncing many truths and doctrines of the Christian charismatic evangelic circles that... Uh, I had been in for 25 years or so, and seeing more of the overarching picture and program of Elohim's grand plan laid out from Genesis to Revelation. Like mm. it doesn't, wasn't a scripture here, a scripture there, a piecemeal here, a piecemeal there. Uh, this is what God is doing. This is what God is saying. No, it was the narrative from Genesis to Revelation that didn't break. Mm -hmm. Right. It, you know, and I was getting that thing, but I still didn't have the whole picture. Uh, so, uh, as I say here, so you can see uh, uh, what I mean by a wondrous biblical transformation, mm -hmm. but still not getting how the assembly of Elohim was going to come through the great darkness and the destruction of the last generation. Then came the last and most important parts of biblical understanding to answering the decades of spiritual blindness. Mm -hmm. I had read and reread scriptures from beginning several times. I'm sure the word of truth I read through those was in me somewhere, but I still didn't have clear understanding as to how the victory of uh, overcoming uh, Messiah believing uh, assembly would uh, make it through yes. until the return of Yeshua. This brings me to the glorious realization through here, Zion Tabernacle and mostly filled out by this, this series, but uh, this video right here, that's why it's so amazing. Uh, I had already uh, learned and believed that Israel has everlasting covenants with Elohim, and King David's lineage is the rightful head of the everlasting kingdom of Elohim in the holy capital city of the king, Jerusalem. But now in this video series, and especially part four, I have obtained the clear truth and plan of Elohim for me but furthermore, and more important, of the nation, and which he calls in this last time, the ingathering and the remnant exodus. Yes. So uh, I am one blessed believer <laughs> these days. You know, uh, it's so good to hear your testimony, Richard, because you are a living example of what we're telling people through this series. What this is all about is to open people's eyes and their minds to Yahweh's plan about Israel. Amen. Because Israel has been a downplayed, minimized, a pushed aside. Shameful. And now here in these last days, Yahweh is putting his attention onto Israel, onto the remnant, and he got your attention and he's he been leading you along and this is your testimony as one of the remnants. And we know there are thousands more like you 
out there and many more beyond that that will be coming in. Truly, uh, all of this, all of these signs, all of his word uh, is being fulfilled in our day. We're watching it happen. We're a part of it happening. Amen. And it will all happen. It must happen because all of his word is true. And therefore, it must happen. I feel so connected to him in a way I have never, ever been able to be outside of believing this way. And it's believing biblically. Awesome. Awesome. It's a wonderful testimony. Thank you so much for sharing all of I this with so us. I'm so glad to be able to come to this place of his, his grace to me and grace to his nation mm-hmm. in this day and hour. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Richard. Thank you, E, for having me. Okay, I think we're going to uh, talk with uh, Mike now. Mike, uh, what did you find of uh, special interest in this video that you'd like to share about? Well, you know, what stood out to me, uh, E, was the timing of everything. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed the first uh, four videos that we had just seeing how, um, you know, last year was the breastplate and then now we're seeing this in the sky. Yes. And uh, I just really believe this is a, a really encouraging thing for mm-hmm. believers who are coming into Israel to look to. Mm, yes. And as I was going through this video, I started noticing something and it was about the timing. Mm-hmm. And skipping the history that you talked about in the video about Israel uh, and then their liberation and then the Six-Day War, moving on from there, going back to the Star of David planetary alignments, yes, starting in 1990 and then moving up to the 13th one in um, 2014. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what's interesting about that is... Uh, for me, that's that's a little bit personal because in 2011, I got a hold of the Talmudim programs and I'd listened to them, but it wasn't until about 2014 where I really started moving yes. in all of this. I started moving into holy time. You always spoke to mm-hmm. me about eating clean foods and yes. not unclean. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, I contacted the ministry. Right. I right. spoke with you on the phone. Mm-hmm. And I came out here and right. uh, visited at that time. And it's like I was being grafted into Israel. Exactly. That's what it felt like. And it just feels really important that at that time, right, right after that last Star of David sign, then Yahweh just really ramped things up explosively. Yes. And, uh, you know, I just believe that he's doing this work with a lot of different people right. around the world. Uh, the other thing that really grabbed my attention were the tetrads. Mm. And uh, after learning a bit about holy time and then just seeing how these uh, blood moons occurred on Passover and then Sukkot and then Passover and then Sukkot, I thought, well, this right. is really amazing. Yes. yes. And, uh, you know, it just really confirmed uh, all of that to me about holy time and just put away the saturday sabbath and christmas and easter and all of that you know this is something that has significance and i remember in sukkot of 2014 i got to see the blood moon my brother-in-law had a boat (laughs) (laughs) and we went sailing out onto the ocean Uh, and uh, i stayed up and i got to see it and it was pretty cool i've really never seen a lunar eclipse before and that was the first time wow and just uh, experiencing that on sukkot that was uh, really an amazing thing wow that's awesome you know uh, richard i liked what you were saying about the um, messianic seal Um, i thought you gave a really good explanation of that It really makes me feel like I'm a part of the covenant, just looking at that. Right. You know, understanding that Messiah in the center, the king of the Davidic covenant, the king of Israel, joining Israel and the nations together. Yes. And then just seeing that um, Yahweh preserved these artifacts for us. From yes. the first century that we mm-hmm. could actually see, you know, this is the understanding that the early believers had. This is uh, what they what they lived. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, when you realize that 
these artifacts were actually used by Yeshua's brother, yeah. James the Just, who, of course, was continuing on the House of David in right. the midst of that assembly. You can imagine the meaning that it had to them. Right. It's, it's truly amazing for sure. Yes. You know, it definitely makes me feel more connected to the believers of the first century. Right. And uh, I mean, that's really what, from the years I've been here, that's really what we're about here. We're not about a, um, just like a regular Hebrew roots movement or right. uh, Messianic Jews. You know, we're not about the rabbinics. We're about restoring the scriptures, restoring what was lost during the first century. Exactly. And I did a little bit of extracurricular research. Awesome. And uh, I've been a Christian for many years. And the Christians have a symbol. It's called the ichthys fish. I believe I'm uh -huh. saying that right. Uh -huh. And it looks like it's part of that messianic symbol, mm -hmm. the bottom part. And when I did a little bit of research about it, uh, what I found out was it was very similar to a fish that was used by the pagans during that time. Yes. Um, interestingly, the fish in the Messianic seal represents the nations. Now, the way I kind of see this is they separated themselves from Israel mm -hmm. and they divorced by what by them doing that just symbolizes how they divorced themselves from the Davidic covenant and right. from Israel because they, you know, some people may say, well, it's just a symbol. Well, you know, it has meaning and it's documented that that was used to the as for the Christians in the second century. As a whole, the Christian church really does live in a manner that is divorced from the Davidic covenant and Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they say that uh, Israel's done away with. Um, they've adopted the pagan practices of the nations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in attitude and belief, most of the churches, they really don't live as if they are grafted into Israel. Right. So I just feel like their symbol is very analogous to what has actually happened, that they've divorced themselves from the, right. the covenant. You know, uh, we have documented this historically. We have videos about this, how the Gentiles, the Gentile uh, Christians, in the second century, literally did divorce themselves from Israel. And if you read in the Church Fathers, starting with Justin forward, right. it's in there over and over again that they have divorced themselves from Israel. And so, in a way, when you look at the Messianic seal, uh, Christianity as uh, a concept, as a, uh, a movement, isn't represented really there. Because right. it has divorced itself from Israel, whereas in the Messianic seal, that's what you see. You see the people from the nations that have put faith in Messiah are put together by means of the Messianic seal with Israel so that they form one nation. And, right. of course, that's what we've been looking at here when we look at the tribes. Right. And even with... The New Jerusalem, I think uh, everybody who's a believer, whether a Christian or whether a Messianic, they all want to be in the New Jerusalem. Right. And yet when we look at the New Jerusalem in Revelation, everybody has to enter through a gate with one of the names of one of the tribes of Israel on it. Right. And that's really what uh, what you're trying to get at with this video is people are, need to find their place. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not condemning anyone in the Christian church or anything. You know, I was a Roman Catholic. I mean, that's about as Christian as you can get. So, uh, I mean, I can't talk bad about anybody, really. <laughs> right, right. And we're so, talking about Christianity you know, as, um, as, in a sense, a culture. It's yes. not a matter of condemning people. We're not doing that. Right. In fact, the reason that we're sharing all of this is because we love our Christian brothers and sisters but we want them to know that there's a real movement of God that is happening now. There's revelation coming from heaven Amen. right, to show us a different way than uh, what has happened. And the thing about uh, Christendom, we'll call it Christendom, mm -hmm. the system of Christianity, it failed. It failed. And we see it crumbling all around right. us. It can't fulfill the purpose of Yahweh only the 12 tribes of Israel can do that. 
Right. Yes. Uh, can we look at the Messiah star? Oh, I'd love yeah, to. Yeah, let's bring that up. <laughs> That's what's next on my page. So. I'd love to <laughs> talk about the Messiah star with you. You know, I, I'm so glad that you brought up the Messiah star. Yeah. Because when you came to Zion in 2014, you had this gigantic telescope right. in tow. And I saw that and... I saw you unloading this gigantic telescope, <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, what is Yahweh going to do with that? And then I found out in yeah. 2015. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, it's just interesting because um, I do things, and I, I don't always know why. You yes, know? yes. And some people wonder. Sometimes I wonder, and then eventually <laughs> later on, right. like, okay, that's what that was for, you know? Right. After the fact. Yeah, after the fact. I, I have this happen a lot where I'm walking or doing something and I just get an idea in my mind. But sometimes I wish I'd pay more attention to it. Yeah. And uh, this was during the summer of 2015. I was walking out to my RV and it was sunset. And I see these two planets in the uh, western sky. And then the th thought just occurred to me. I, I wonder if that's what it looked like during the Messiah's birth, you know? <laughs> right. I, I, just, I didn't look into it, though. I wish I did, but um, then you had found something online, was it, about it? Yeah, I, I have looked into this, and without going into too much detail, there were a series of conjunctions, actually. And they started in uh, 3 BC. Right. As a matter of fact, some people might have... Uh, seen the presentation put on by uh, someone by the name of Larson, who details uh, these conjunctions, or many of them, in 3 BC. And then he has them kind of ending on December 25th. And that's kind of a satisfying idea for a lot of people. Yeah. However, the truth is, these conjunctions continued into 2 BC, and... This uh, particular conjunction um, was the one that was really uh, most influential so that a number of experts call this the Bethlehem star. Right, right, right. And you went into a lot of detail about that and the um, positioning of the star. Um, you know, I, I thought it was interesting, some of the things you pointed out. Um, the conjunction that happened in 2015 wasn't as perfect as the one in 2 BC. Right. And that's because we're not as perfect as Messiah. Right. So uh, we have the conjunction on uh, 2 BC showing that Jupiter and Venus was above Regulus, symbolizing mm -hmm. that Messiah was on Earth. And then in the conjunction in 2015, we have Jupiter and Venus below Regulus, and it's a little less perfect, the conjunction. Right. And symbolizing that um, Messiah is in heaven. Yes. I really thought it was interesting when you pointed out about, well, the light coming into the world. Mm -hmm. Well, in the first century, 2 BC, we had Messiah coming into the world. Right. And so now we have a new light coming into the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not the rapture. Right. Um, you know, having people just taken up, that's not a light coming into the world. That's the right. light being taken out of the world, exactly. to be honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, At best, really. Yeah. So, uh, and plus, there's a lot of things that have to happen before yes. um, that happens. So, obviously, this, this wasn't talking about the rapture, but... In light of everything that's been happening with Israel mm -hmm. and in light of the planetary alignments that we've been seeing and the tetrads, the uh, Messiah star being right in the middle of the tetrads. Um, and then now we have this revelation of the breastplate come out and then the tribes of Israel written mm -hmm. in the sky mm -hmm. in the stars it's really clear that um, you know this light is the restored nation of Israel yes. um, being born into the world and um, I like that Isaiah 60 prophecy that um, arise and shine that mm -hmm. your light has come for behold darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the peoples but Yahweh will arise on you and his glory shall be seen on you nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising 
And, uh, you know, I just feel like this is really showing who is carrying the torch mm-hmm. in this time. And it's going to be the restored nation of Israel. Right. And it's going to look very different than what many people are looking for, because I think sometimes when people realize Israel is important, then they look to rabbinic sources, thinking that they must have the Hebraic way. Right. But what we're seeing through this is, no, the emphasis is on the 12 tribes, not right. just Judah. Nothing against Judah. Judah's part of this too. Right. But this is bigger than just Judah, and it has a different flavor to it because it's a rising movement. Right. You know, and a couple of other things I wanted to point out, um, you had mentioned about darkness. Mm-hmm. And I think now it's more obvious than it was then about darkness being right. over the earth. I mean, with everything that's happening with the elections and we can see total social upheaval. Mm-hmm. Um and, you know, America just being taken over. Clearly, all of this fulfills this prophecy in Isaiah 60, including this literal fulfillment of the light that it's come. Right. And it was heralding all of this. And in 2015, uh, when the Messiah star happened, in that same year, we had the Beast of Daniel surfacing seminar. Right. And... We pointed out that all this was about to happen right? because of the rise of globalism. And now we're seeing what that really means. And mm-hmm. I think everybody can understand that. Everybody that's wearing a mask right now, people who have lost their jobs, people who have lost their businesses, people who can't go to church are being forbidden. People have lost their freedoms. Uh, I think it's time to wake up and see that we are in the midst of a great darkness and This was a true prophecy, and Mm -hmm. Yahweh is making a way, but it's not the way that so many people want. Right. A lot of people, what they want is they want to have America back the way it was. They want to see the Christian church triumph. Right. And this is not Yahweh's plan. This isn't what's going to happen. Right. Right. You know, and I just feel like it's important that we just need to get on with his program. Right. The whole globe is involved in this now. Exactly. And that's the big problem. So that means the whole globe is in for destruction. And that's really what it's saying here in Isaiah, because it says darkness shall cover the earth, not just one place, but the whole globe. Right. Do you have anything else? Uh, No, E, I think that about covers everything that I have to share. Well, I'm telling you, that was awesome. I hope you enjoyed those interviews as much as I did. I was just really blessed by the insights of each and every person that we interviewed. And for me, too, it helps to bring this message home to how it affects actual people. And that it's really about identity. It's really about being part of something that is literally eternal. And so I hope you get that message, and I hope that it will help you to find your identity with Yahweh's nation. A few thoughts to share with you. We were talking about the Messiah star, and the Messiah star sign occurred as the light of renewed Israel. That's what we're talking about, renewed Israel. That's who we are, is renewed Israel, renewed through the renewed covenant with Yeshua Messiah. And that really is what is powering the renewal of this nation. And the light that came into the world, the Messiah star, literally fulfills the prophecy in Isaiah chapter 60, and it heralds Israel, renewed Israel, being born in the world in the midst of global darkness. That's what all of this is telling us. That's the simple message. If you put it in a nutshell, what we're telling you. That's the revelation.
The prophecy of Isaiah 60 is unfolding. You know, if you are of renewed Israel, you might not have knowledge of this in your head, but something happens in your heart when you read these verses, when you see these signs having to do with Israel, when you hear the words, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of Yahweh is risen on you. And then when you read, For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the peoples. Can't you identify with that? Can't you see that that is really where we're at right now? A growing darkness encompassing the entire globe. Can't you feel it all around you? Can't you feel it restricting you? We've been seeing that light getting brighter. The breastplate tribes are now revealed. We've come to know so much more about the tribes of Israel through the breastplate tribes. Where do you fit in on that breastplate? Do you even know about this? If you don't know about this, come and find out. The Maseroth tribes are now revealed. Where are you in this picture? You need to find out. This is the alternative to the darkness. This is it. You know, like I said in the interview, Christianity is crumbling. I'm sorry, but it's all dying. It's all caving in to the world. I'm not saying every Christian has done that, but you know what? The process of caving in is pretty easy to see. You don't have to see the entire building all the way caved in to know what's going to happen. On 9-11, if you were watching on TV and you saw that building start to go, you knew it was going all the way. That's Christianity right now. It has failed. It has had almost 2,000 years to accomplish Messiah's purpose in the earth. And I'm sorry, but it hasn't happened. It couldn't happen because Christianity divorced itself from Israel, and Israel is Yahweh's plan. You got to get out of that. Because it's crashing with everything else in this world here in the end time. And if you've been putting your hope in America, you're watching the same thing happen here. It's caving in, friends. The corruption, like termites eating out everything, the whole internal structure of the country. A republic depends on righteous people. And we have a severe shortage of righteous people in the world today. We have some, but not enough to be able to maintain the structures from the past. The people who are in power don't believe in those things that the country was founded on. And when America caves in, you're going to see dominoes falling. Falling right in to the global government. Based on entirely different principles that are antithetical to everything the United States was ever built on. 
there probably will be a bloody battle. But it's the losing side of history to try and preserve something that can't be preserved. We have an answer. The answer is written in the stars. It has been there all along. It's written into the scriptures. There's an order. There is a place. The place, the order, is revealed in the tribes of Israel. A paradigm shift is what you need. It's all here. That's all got to change the way you think, the way you look at the scriptures, the way you understand what your relationship is to other believers, to the world. It all needs to change. You need to start recognizing the nation you belong to, an eternal nation that cannot be destroyed, that the Creator will not allow to be destroyed because of an everlasting covenant. And here, in these final days, this is the time that Israel finally, after all of our struggles and all of our failures, we're coming back. We're coming back. Our light has shown. The darkness of this world cannot stop us and we are going to overcome in the midst of the darkness. Israel is going to rise up just like that eagle in that picture to a whole new life, to be the place of light in the midst of the darkness, a light to shine the way through this difficult time to the coming of Yeshua Messiah. Now is the time. Now is the time to get on board with that. If you wait too long, it's going to be a big mistake. Just like this whole COVID thing, it'll catch you off guard. You will be confused. You will not know what to do. And even if you have faith, it's going to be a lot harder for you than it would have been if you had just heeded this message and taken up the right path. We're here for you. We've been at this a long time because we've seen this coming. We have the answers. Lots of answers. Come and get them. We mentioned the high priest. The Aaronic high priest wore the breastplate tribes on his heart. These, of course, picture the tribes of Israel in all their variety and character. But as with everything else having to do with that order of worship in Israel, this is all after a pattern. This is all after the pattern of heavenly things. Yeshua is our high priest serving in the more perfect tabernacle. And he entered in through his own blood. Yes, for the world, but especially for his nation, for Israel. He's the king of Israel. He is the author of the renewed covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. To enter that covenant, you must enter in through Israel. 
because that's where the covenant exists. He is our heavenly high priest. And I think as we've seen, he's wearing a breastplate. And it's not made of gold. It's not made of pre precious gems. It might be, though. I don't know what's on those stars, do you? It's far more glorious a breastplate than was ever worn by the Aaronic priests. It's something that only Yahweh himself could construct and did construct. And he put it there, and it has been on his heart ever since. We're there. Close to his heart. Do you understand that? Do you see that? Do you see that call to return to your nation? That's where he is. That's where the covenant is. That's where his heart is. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, this is explained to Israel. You are a set-apart people to Yahweh, your Elohim. Yahweh, your Elohim, has chosen you to be a people for himself, a treasured possession above all the people on the face of the earth. Because of Yahweh loving you, and because of him guarding the oath which he swore to your fathers. Did all that suddenly go away because Yeshua Messiah came? The oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't matter anymore? Should we just take some kind of a cosmic marker and scribble out the signs of the Zodiac, of the Maseroth, of the tribes of Israel? Do you believe that could possibly be true? Friends, this is something real. And this is being revealed to you now so that you can intimately know, like David, what the Maseroth is saying to you and where you belong and who you are. Find your place in his nation. Be part of renewed Israel. That's who I am, by the way. I'm not a Christian. I'm a renewed Israelite. Come and be one too. You want to read about renewed Israelites? Read Revelation 7. 144,000 renewed Israelites sealed out of the 12 tribes of Israel. Out of every tribe. They're the leaders of renewed Israel. Seen in the Revelation vision. And where did that come from? all the prophets. We go into this in great detail. In all this material that we have available for you at Zion.net, lots and lots and lots of stuff. If you want to understand about this, we've got it. Come and get it. Is it going to take work? Well, I don't know. What do you want to spend your time doing? Do you like bowling? How about watching TV? Or do you care about your eternal future? This isn't like the Christian church. We don't say to people, okay, say this little prayer, and now everything's all taken care of. 
If you're an Israelite, you have responsibilities to your nation. You have responsibilities under the covenant to Yeshua Messiah, your king. And you need to learn about those, and you need to walk those out. If you don't want that, and you just want to play, we've got nothing for you. If you want to get on with the real deal, this is it. It's here for you. That's the story of the one and only nation written in the stars.